In front of me is a Xiaomi Redmi Note 8 Pro and today I will share with you a couple of tweaks and tricks that I can do on this device. So we're going to begin with the one that might agitate some people which is uh, the notch or it's more of a teardrop um, and you can actually hide it if you don't like that kind of style. It will basically create the black, black pixels right be on the same line as the notch itself in a way hiding it. And to do it you'd go into the settings then to the display right here and let's find uh, where is it notch status bar was literally under my finger and you have the option right here hide notch tap on it it kind of reboots you disregard this for some reason it changed the up but you can see that now it's a black one and there's no more notch now unfortunately in some cases different phones uh, have the uh, courage to actually hide all the times and receptions and stuff like that and the black borders and just make them white but unfortunately here it's not the case it just moves everything and makes the screen completely inaccessible which is a little bit of a shame but still if you're not a fan of it this is a good way to get rid of it now moving on we're gonna go into a thing that i personally really like which is the gesture navigations and on this device they're especially really well done um, not like the Google ones that are kind of wonky. Um, so yeah, to, to enable it, go back to the settings. And from here, we're gonna go into the uh, additional settings. So somewhere on the bottom right here. And from here, for full screen display. And you have the two options. Now, once you launch it for the first time, it will give you a little guide on how to use this. So you can tap on learn, um, yep, learn. And it's fairly simple but really nice so swipe up to close uh, swipe up and hold to go to recent and swipe from the sides to go back now this is particularly nice considering a lot of phones that do the gesture navigations just flip the switches off and just make the little bars that you need to pull from the bottom that just works weird and i don't really like it particularly so this is really nice with the swipe from the side it's it's just way more intuitive than anything else so yeah now moving on we're gonna go into the one hand display which i think i actually need to enable the buttons again because without them i don't i'm not really sure if there is a way of uh, enabling this so let's go back even though i don't really like the buttons i have to have it on for this particular reason so Basically what this will allow you to do is use the device in one hand by shrinking the display so once you're holding it you have easier access to reach to the top because the top will be just way lower. Um, so to enable this we would go into additional settings again so right here and from here find at the bottom right here one-handed mode. Check it on. You also have additional options to what size you want to shrink it to and also a little animation that will display how to activate it. So all you really need to do is to shrink it, swipe from the middle to the side that you want to shrink it towards. So basically today your, I guess, dominant hand that you will be using this device in. And just as an example, I'm gonna grab the phone in my hand and just as a comparison, you can see that I can access basically everything without doing some kind of hand gymnastics to access it. Now, if you want to basically get it back to normal, all you need to do is just tap on the empty space and it goes back to how it was previously. And going back to the setting, you also can make it a little bit bigger if that was just too small for you, as you can see. Now it's bigger, now if I would change it, it goes even smaller. So now it's basically the size of a finger. Now this might be a little bit too small. And also, just as an example, the phone is fully usable in this mode, even though it looks uh, hilariously small at this moment, considering it, it, it is tiny. It's fully usable, you can do everything that you would normally do on the device. Let me make it again full screen, and there we go. Okay, so moving on, we're gonna go into something that I guess people that play games uh, will find useful, which is uh, Game Turbo. And what we'll, allow, what we'll do basically, not really allow, um, is it's, it limits apps that are in the background while boosting the apps in the foreground, giving them additional 
resources that, for instance, might have been used previously on something else that was running in the background, while also giving you handy features like muting calls or just making, if you pick up a call, it goes automatically to the loudspeaker so you don't have to put the phone to your face to, to talk to someone. Uh, it's basically a customizable to how phone behaves when you're playing something. And to, to enable it, we're gonna go into the special features. So right at the bottom of settings and you have game turbo right here. Um, now it's looking for games, but there is none installed, so it doesn't find anything. And if it doesn't find, you can also tap on add game and locate it yourself. If in this case, you also can add any kind of app. In this case, it doesn't need to be a game. Let's go back. And as I said, you have settings here and you have the game uh, speed booster, you have uh, home page orientation. So basically whenever you launch the game, it will, you can determine in what state the phone will launch it. So you don't have to like flip it around. Uh, performance mode, so you have uh, basically what it does, uh, description, so bandwidth priority, optimized uh, touch controls, uh, and enhanced uh, audio. Now this is by default enabled whenever you launch a game that it has added. So like you can see, uh, give more bandwidth to the game running in the foreground, uh, optimized touch control, which increase touch response and sensitivity, and enhance audio, uh, and reduce ambient noise and conversations. So it just per additional settings that will enhance just the general feel of how how it is to play a game on a mobile device. And the last thing that I wanted to share is more for multitasking and especially handy if you're trying to listen to music while doing other stuff on the device. So I'm gonna start off with YouTube as everybody probably uses it on the device and you're trying to listen to some music. Let me mute the device device so there is no sound so once I would launch something and get a unfortunate ad okay there we go so you can see that it's playing right now now if I would go to recent it's gonna stop but that's besides the point you have the button right here split screen press and hold the an app and drag it so boom we drag it like so skip no one cares um, and then you can add additional apps. So you can tap on home button uh, to basically go to your home screen. And you can see that the app that we have added to multitasking, it's still up on the top. And we can now add additional, for instance, web browser, no thanks. And I can tap it right now to play the video. And as you can see, it's constantly playing. Well, I can continue to do other stuff on here. Now, additionally to that, I can press the home button and it's gonna continue playing in the background, even though, well, basically the app is closed at this moment. So if I would go to settings, you can see that it's still playing. So it's a fairly nice thing if you like to multitask uh, or, or primarily listen to YouTube without actually having it open on your phone or maybe not being limited just using that one app. And if you want to close it, all you need to do is just drag over the line to the bottom and now you can close it like you would normally do. So yeah, that would basically conclude all the tweaks and tricks that I wanted to share. And if you found any of them helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.